In this video, I'll be continuing my Terraria Inferno Mode Gunner journey as we enter Hard Mode. Will I be able to survive the sadistic, cruel, and brutal Calamity Inferno's Hard Mode? Before we start, only 15% of you guys are actually subscribed to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and help me get to 250k subs before the end of the year. Enjoy! After successfully defeating Wall of Flesh, we ate the Demon Heart to increase our accessory slot. Then as we went back to spawn, we were immediately greeted with a hard mode goblin invasion which wasn't too hard to deal with. After that, I went to the corruption underground to farm some curse flames from the new hard mode corruption enemies. Using the curse flames, I was able to craft the curse capper, an upgrade to the phoenix blaster. While it is not too good of a weapon, it is cheap to craft and gets the job done. I turned my worm scarf into a brain of confusion, and I crafted the amalgamated brain, an accessory that gives me a chance to dodge attacks. Then I mined down some freshly spawned palladium ores. While I was mining down, I encountered the bone wizard NPC. I bought a crystal ball from him. I turned the palladium ores into bars and crafted the palladium armor. The set bonus gives us greatly increased life regeneration. Then I went to the brimstone crack biome. I farmed down the hard mode enemies there to get some essence of half -hawk. On that night, I bought a shotgun and an illegal gun part from the arms dealer NPC. I combined both of the materials to craft a weapon called the butcher. It is a shotgun that shoots slow at first, but the firing speed ramps up the longer you shoot it. I turned my crest flames into Ichor and crafted some Ichor bullets. I also turned the Ichor bullets into endless ammo using crystal ball. Alright, now we should be ready for combat. To test the damage, we are going to be testing our newly crafted Butcher against Wall of Flesh. I gotta be honest, despite Butcher being an early hard mode weapon and having a cheap crafting recipe, this shotgun performs way much better than I expected. As long as you ramp it up to its maximum speed, it was able to kill Wall of Flesh in under 30 seconds. That is very impressive. And yes, it took me like 6 Wall of Flesh to finally get the Ranger Emblem accessory. I have incredible RNG luck. Then I went to the underground hollow and used Boom Shurikens to mine down some crystal shards, and also to obtain a gelatin crystal, a summoning item for Queen Slime. After after doing all that, I went to the hollow surface and summoned Queen Slime herself. Immediately, you can already notice a huge difference in the fight. As now, Queen Slime is actually a fun boss to fight, not just another fodder optional boss. Despite being Infernum, I gotta say, Queen Slime difficulty is not too hard, but it is still nothing to scoff at. I do have to say that Queen Slime is my most favorite hard mode Infernum boss, because they managed to somehow successfully turn a boring boss into something majestic. The only part of the fight that I kinda dislike is when it shoots out spiky crystal balls. It is not too hard to dodge, but it made the fight kinda bullet hell-ish, which I do not like. A quick smart tip is to wait for a night time before summoning Queen Slime. As you can see, the attack visuals more clearly during the night. If you notice, I am not using any wings for the fight. Because early hard mode wings are terrible. Balloons are just way superior. Phase 2 of the fight is where it gets super interesting. Queen Slime is now able to shoot majestical death ray laser beams. And yes, this is the reason why I absolutely love this fight. Since Queen Slime is one of my most favorite Infernum boss fight, naturally I was accustomed to dodging most of the attacks. I say it most because it is still Infernum, it is still hard. I do have to credit our Butcher Shotgun for helping us to make a quick and steady work out of Queen Slime, which lets me finish her off by doing a back shot. Queen Slime is now defeated. From the treasure bag, I got the Queen Slime mount, and we also got the Dissonance Hook, which lets us teleport to the location we hook. I much prefer regular hooks though. We are missing some pieces for the Crystal Assassin Armor set, so I proceed to kill more Queen Slime, obtaining the full armor set in the process. The set bonus of this armor grants us the ability to do a powerful dash. Then I went to the underground snow biome. I farmed down the enemies there to obtain Essence of Elium. Using those, I crafted a Cryo Key, a summoning item for Cryogen. Then I used the key to summon him on the surface snow biome. Cryogen might have one of the easiest first phase out of all the Infernum bosses. Most of the attacks are projectile spam. You can either dodge them pretty easily, or you can just tank most of the attacks. But for the most part, you just gotta keep up your momentum, so that your movement speed is faster than the projectile speed. Don't get me wrong, it is still a cool boss. I like the idea of surrounding the player in ice pillars, limiting their freedom of movement, resulting in us having a slightly harder time dodging the ice crystal bullet hell. But me personally myself, I think the ice pillar is a bit too short, and I was never really a big fan of the bullet hell concept in the first place. And the best way to describe him is similar of a tutorial boss for a bullet hell game. However, I would not underestimate Cryogen completely, because during his final phase, Cryogen starts to lose his cool. The interface between his attacks are way much faster, resulting in him attacking in much more dangerous and unpredictable patterns. Most often charging directly at you, dealing very high damage. I guess you can say he is no longer chill. But with the help of increased mobility from Terra Spark Boots and utilizing the dashes from Crystal Assassin Armor Set, we were able to defeat Cryogen, freeing the Archmage NPC in the process. I talked to him and bought the Frostbite Blaster. 
I opened Cryogen Treasure Bag, but the only useful loot I got is a soul of Cryogen, a somewhat decent hard mode wings that drops icicle on its spot. I thought the Frostbite Blaster would be a good weapon due to it having good DPS, something I'll realize later that it's actually dog water. I crafted the mechanical eye, and on that night I decided to use it and summon the twins as my first mechanical boss to fight. Little did I know nor expect, this fight is hard. The twins move extremely fast. The horizontal and vertical speed of our soul of cryogen wings were not able to catch up. Not to mention Frostbite Blaster can barely hit the twins due to its sluggish fire rate. I switched back to my trusty balloons and my reliable butcher shotgun. They modified the twins to be way much faster and dangerous in the most annoying way possible. Spasmatism breaks their flame more often and shoot their fireballs wider, burning your arse into crisp. While Retinazer hops on steroids, juicing up the laser firepower capabilities to its maximum potential. It might look visually cool, but it is genuinely extremely irritating to fight this boss. They do have one new attack during phase 2, which is this laser death ray nuke fireball spin around combo. I am bad at naming attacks. This attack does look cool, but while it is a bit hard to dodge it, it doesn't deal too high of a damage. Its final phase on the other hand is on a whole another level. Yes, once you bring down one of the two twins, the one you brought down first will get a desperation phase. Spasmatism can now do a flamethrower Beyblade spin, and spit out deadly acidic flame straight up from Chernobyl. And Retinazer becomes an ADHD induced laser terminator with the sole purpose of ripping apart the player's butt cheeks. This desperation phase alone almost made me quit Infernum, and also the main reason why this video took longer than expected to make. While the visuals of the desperation phase might look cool, I definitely regret choosing the twins as my first mechanical boss to fight. Something I noticed, Retinazer final phase is much harder than Spasmatism. Even though I like Retinazer final phase more, I ended up going with Spasmatism just because it is slightly easier. And honestly, I just wanted to get this fight over with. I gotta admit, the amalgamated brain accessory really came in handy as it allows me to dodge some near-death scenarios. And finally, I was able to successfully take down the twins. That was way too much effort for just one mechanical boss. The twins barely give us any reward apart from Soul of Sight. Mithril and Oricalcum now generates in the underground, and so I mined down both of them. I turned both of them into bars and crafted a hard mode anvil. Then I crafted both Mithril and Oricalcum armor. But after some DPS testing, I ended up using Oricalcum because it is more defensive. I crafted the other two mechanical bosses summoning item, and on that night, I tried using the vanilla boss exploit to chase Infernum Destroyer. For reference, it is this video right here, made by Terra Steel. Sadly, it didn't work against Infernum Destroyer. It did not work on Infernum Skeletron Prime either, so there goes my plan. Then I went to the Sulfur Sea to gather some materials. In here, I met the Calamity Vanity NPC, which sells Vanity stuff. While we are here, I also cleared a huge chunk of the Sulfur Sea, and I turned it into a boss arena. Then I went to the ocean to beat down some sharks. I used their fins to craft a seafood, a summoning item for none other than our next worm boss, the Aquatic Scourge. Infernum Aquatic Scourge is significantly different from the original, as it introduces the bubble mechanic where you can get intoxicated from the Sulfur and you need to hop in the bubble. Not to mention, you gotta fight this guy underwater now, or else he'll be in rage. At first, the fight went pretty smoothly, until I realized it felt too cramped, because I built my arena a bit too small. Because of that, I did die a few times. And I was right, after expanding the arena, honestly it made significant improvement. As during the fight, Infernum removes water physics and gives us infinite flight, meaning mobility actions are much easier to perform. I was able to dodge his attacks much easier, so much so I was able to take him down to his phase 2. But yet again, like usual, phase 2 is where things get rough. From the looks of it, I think Aquatic Scorch charges much faster during his phase 2. You might be thinking, how is it possible for a man to die to the same attack multiple times in a row? Look, I wasn't even using any wings, okay? Before things get even rougher, I decided to retreat and improve upon my gears. I reforged some of my stuff, and I bought a stack of sulfur skin potion to be resistant to aquatic scorch poison. I then bought a counter scarf from Clotir NPC and turned it into an efficient scarf. It essentially upgrades my dash. I made a house in the jungle biome and moved the witch doctor here. Only to forget, I'm playing in version 1.4.4 of Terraria. This guy doesn't sell leaf wings anymore on early hard mode. So yes, this was pointless. I bought a paintball gun from the painter NPC, and I combined it with Soul of Sight to craft a speed blaster. A lethal paintball gun that shoots multiple streams of deadly colorful peas. Then I went to the underground jungle to farm the enemies there. Because I know RNG is not on my side, I'm farming the enemies here to get jungle points, so that I could use the points on the point shop mode to buy tattered bee wings. Then I flew up and farmed 
from some wyverns on the sky islands for some souls of light. I combined both of the materials into a bee wings. These wings provide permanent honey buff. I also bought some mimic spawners. I need to defeat these mimics to acquire a dual hook, a much faster hook than our diamond hook. Now that we've improved our gear, it is time to face Aquatic Scorch once more. With the help of our newly improved mobility accessories, I was able to maneuver through Scorch attack much more easily. I told you I was able to dodge well, it is just the accessories, trust. And the Speed Blaster we freshly crafted, despite looking like a weak weapon, was able to deal consistent good damage. This is a significant upgrade to our previously used Butcher Shotgun. It took a much shorter time to bring down 3 of Aquatic Scorch faces. As Scorch reaches his final phase, he went up the surface. I did not know he was hitting up the Sulfur Sea. When I realized it, it was already too late. I got overwhelmed by the things happening on my screen, distracting me from the real threat. Which are none other than Scourge's deadly attacks, now much faster and more dangerous. Now he can even summon an acid tornado, and spews bullet hell while charging at you. I was unprepared for this and I died. The next time I fought it, I was much more prepared. I readied up my booty cheeks and gloriously maneuvered all over Scourge's kamikaze. Finally, I was able to survive through Scourge's desperation phase. Successfully defeating the giant wet worm with a lethal paintball gun. I opened the treasure bag, but I don't need nor want any of these loots. The acid rain event immediately spawned after I defeated Aquatic Scourge. The event is now slightly harder with new enemies and threats as we've defeated the ruler. I would've never guessed the day I want to do acid rain, but yes, unfortunately, I do need to farm this event. I even crafted an event spawner for it. The reason is because I need to defeat Flak Crabs, an enemy that only spawns in phase 2 of the acid rain. This was in order to obtain this weapon called the Flak Toxic Cannon. Finally, after going through 3 phase 2 acid rains, I was able to obtain the Flak Toxic Cannon. This weapon is very unique. It has very high DPS, but it can only shoot upwards. You can't shoot downwards nor sideways. I also got the crack mouse spine hook. Afterwards, I summoned the pirate invasion. Little did I know nor expect, the blood moon immediately started after I summoned the pirate invasion. Let's just say, things get really out of hand. My game became really laggy. There are so much enemies covering my screen, I don't even know what to do. Luckily, they drop hard, so I don't die instantly. Nevertheless, I was able to beat the pirate invasion with much ease. I was so unlucky, I needed to do a second pirate invasion just to get the Midas Prime gun. This gun is basically an upgrade to the crack shot called. And yes, the whole ricocheting coins thing is a whole reference to ultra kill. As the night comes, I summon Skeletron Prime. Prepare yourself for what you're about to see might be perfectly balanced. As you can see, Flak Toxic Cannon is perfect for bosses like Skeletron Prime, as they constantly float on top of you, meaning there is no downside of using this weapon. And yes, Skeletron Prime did not stun a single chance. This weapon shreds the f*** out of him, by passing most of his faces without breaking a single sweat. I used to stand the Toxic Cannon in my old video, and I have to say, I regretted doing it. It is fascinating how it's always the niche, underrated weapon that nobody uses that breaks the game's balance, most likely due to them receiving less attention. Skeletron Prime can barely even do his final desperation phase. That is how fast this weapon was able to obliterate him. I even had to summon more Skeletron Prime. It was just to make sure this weapon truly stretched them. Not even a death ray beam phase could save the mechanical skull now. Upon defeating Skeletron Prime, we obtain lots of souls of right. Then we proceed to mine the newly generated adamantite and titanium ores. They're a bit rarer compared to previous hard mode ores. I crafted a hard mode forge and turned both of them into bars. I also turned both of them into their respective armor. I also crafted adamantite particle accelerator and titanium railgun. Adamantite accelerator doesn't recoil you back, but it deals less damage than the titanium railgun. Gun. So obviously, we'll be going with the railgun. Looks like titanium armor provides more benefit if you're closer to enemies due to the shards. But we'll be using adamantite since we are far from the enemies most of the time. It provides good set bonus too. Then I mined down some cryonic ores in the underground snow biome. I turned them into bars and crafted the ornate shield which lets me dash. Along with Daedalus armor set and the starlight wings. Rendering my previously crafted adamantite armor set completely useless. As the night comes, it is time to face the last mechanical boss. It is none other than the destroyer. While the titanium railgun is slow to charge and use, it is fantastic to use against destroyer, as it is able to pierce through its segments, dealing really solid DPS. The downside of this weapon is you gotta have precise timing in order to not miss your shots. If you miss your shot, that is already a lot of DPS loss. Infernum Destroyer is a bit more bullet hell-ish, gaining new attacks and forcing the player to adapt to the new movements it received. One most notable change is you can't chase it anymore, especially with piercing weapons. 
due to the calamity deaths properly adding reactive damage reduction to its body parts. I still died to destroyer a few times. It is not skill issue. I was just adapting myself to destroyer's attack patterns. You could call it limit testing. But honestly, because of our really good weapon, the fight really isn't that hard since we deal shit ton of damage. The logic is I don't have to dodge if the boss dies before I die. So yeah, I basically railed the destroyer using my titanium railgun. Now the destroyer is dead, we've successfully defeated all the three mechanical bosses. Gaining access to hollowed ores and bars. Oh, and by the way, the Speed Blaster Paintball Gun got rework. The sad part is it got rework just as I defeated the mechanical bosses. So yeah, there is that. I first crafted the pickaxe axe. Then I upgraded my boots into an angel threads. I realized my bars ain't enough for an armor set. So I mined more from the underground hollow. Then I turned the hollowed bars into a full set of hollowed armor. I went to the underground jungle to mine some chlorophyte ores. I also got some life roots along the way. Then I turned the chlorophyte into bars and crafted the chlorophyte armor. Which made my hollowed armor quickly obsolete. I bought ancient crafting materials from this NPC. Say what you want, but quality of life mods like this offer a very comfortable experience. Then I crafted a star cannon so I can upgrade it to the super star shooter. I reforged lots of my gears and bought tons of fallen stars from the alchemist NPC. I turned all the fallen stars into unlimited ammo, so we can finally use our super star shooter without the worry of running out of ammunition. Afterwards, I went to the brimstone crack biome to mine down some of these minority hellstones. These ores are used to craft the summoning item for a brimstone elemental. Also, I forgot to mention I crafted Calamitas clone summoning item earlier. Now that we are ready for combat, let's summon the Calamitas clone. At first, the fight went pretty smoothly. The the first few phases were fine. It is not too hard to dodge most of her attacks. However, for sure, I needed some time to adjust to the bullet hell. I am very sure my setup was good enough to beat Kal clone, but I definitely needed some warm ups first. So after inevitably dying, I decided to go and fight the Brimstone Elemental first to get some warm ups. I am looking respectfully at those nice pair of bazonkers. I still remember the days when YouTube would demonetize our videos if we had Brimstone Elemental in the thumbnail or the video itself. Good old times. As expected, Superstar Shooter was able to shred Brimstone Elemental with ease. Not to mention, Chlorophyte Armor against her was definitely overkill. The healing aura this armor provides helped me to basically tank most of her attacks. Did they nerf Brimstone Elemental? I swear, her attacks used to be faster, and I'm pretty sure her personality used to be bigger. Anyways, anyhow, we successfully beat up the woman with barely any effort needed to be done. Now that we got the warm-up that we needed, it is time to fight the bootleg Calamitas once more. I'd be lying if I said this fight was easy. It's not hard, but it definitely gave me some trouble, especially in the later phases of the fight. You know me and how much I dislike bullet hell boss fights. And this fight against Calamitas clone is a foreshadowing to what would be a bullet hell nightmare later. Though I was still able to manage Walmart Calamitas bullet hell. At the very least, it is organized and structured. I do wish my weapon dealt more damage though. Cal clone has multiple phases. In one of her phases, she's able to summon her brothers to aid her in battle. And as you guessed it, I had the most trouble in this fight facing against the brothers, as I had a difficult time focusing on two different enemies spewing bullet hell. Not to mention the small arena limiting my mobility. Because of this, this fight was proven to be a bit more troublesome than I expected. While Super Star Shooter did prove to show high numbers to target dummies earlier, saying Star Shooter is a powerful weapon would be like saying you handle transaction for a multi-billion dollar company. While in reality, you're just a target cashier, because this weapon is mediocre at best at dealing damage, especially due to Calamity Boss's high armor. However, it does get the job done. After learning and paying attention to Calamity's attack patterns, I somehow managed to successfully yet gloriously dodge most of her dangerous attacks, bringing her down to her final phase. In my opinion, I do think it is a bit ironic that her final face is easier than her brother's face. Or maybe it is just me. I do generally have a difficult time focusing on different stuff all at once. After some time beating up the Haram Abomination, we were able to successfully defeat Calamitas clone. We proceed to open the treasure bag, obtaining a new gun called Animosity. It has two firing modes, sniper rifle and burst of bullets. It deals more DPS than what the numbers tell. I'll explain more later. As for now, we must dive deep down the underground jungle to initiate a fight against the mother nature herself, Plantera. Let me show you why this Animosity gun is powerful. As you can see, the sniper rifle mode fires high velocity bullet, while the burst mode fires the bullet in your inventory. So you can use either bullets to reduce enemy's defense, then switch to sniper rifle mode to absolutely shred them with a high velocity bullet. I was expecting Plantera to be troublesome like Hulk clone, but I was surprised to see that the fight actually felt solid. I love the fight, it is not too hard, but it is not too easy either. I still died a few times here and there, but it actually felt fair. Plantera's later phases were aggressive, but well balanced, shown by how 
I could actually tell on what's going on on my screen. I know, I know, it might look visually mid, but sometimes you gotta appreciate the simple things in life. And amidst all the infernum visual effect bullet hell chaos, sometimes all we need is just something simple and solid to impress us. Alright, I should stop yapping. All I needed to say was Animosity is very decent at taking down Plantera. From opening her treasure bag, we got some living shards. Due to my superb and outstanding luck, I need to fight Plantera again later to get the Venus Magnum gun. As right now, our objective is to build an artificial glowy mushroom biome on the surface, which took quite a while to make. All this effort just so this goofy zesty mushroom guy can move in. We only need him to purchase an auto hammer. As the auto hammer lets us convert chlorophyte bars into shroomite bars. Using the bars, I crafted the shroomite armor and the hoverboard. The set bonus of shroomite armor puts us in stealth mode and gives us higher range damage. I then teleported to the dungeon and farmed down the enemies there to get tons of ectoplasm. I also got a few post plantera dungeon loots by doing this. I then turned the ectoplasms into the three main calamity cores. These cores are important for crafting powerful items such as Asgard's Valor, a shield that grants us a more powerful dash and higher defensive capabilities. I crafted a few spectre bars and turned them into the Pearl God Gun. This gun fires shock blast rounds that emit massive explosions and has the ability to lifesteal. Just to show you how powerful this gun is, we'll be testing it against Plantera. She stood absolutely no chance against the destructive power of the Pearl God. We also got the Venus Magnum gun from beating up a few Planteras. On the next day, I went to the ocean in order to find a mysterious entity in which we must disturb to summon the Anahita boss. Did you guys know her name used to be Siren in the past? It got changed into Anahita recently, alongside with her receiving a new sprite. In Persian mythology, Anahita is a goddess who rules over fertility and wisdom. So, does that mean she's breathable? Damn. I can fix her. Anahita's first face is not much of a threat. It is mostly just her spamming a flurry of bullet hell projectiles. While she might be a threat if you fought her before Plantera, she's no longer much of a danger now, as we can easily dodge her attacks with our new swift and agile gears. However, on her second face, the landscape starts to shake, as Anahita summons her submissive beta male sea pitbull, or lots of you might recognize as Leviathan. Don't let appearance fool you. Despite Leviathan being a fat ass, his attacks are really fast, bringing a new meaning to don't judge a Lovecraftian mythology critter by its cover. This rabies infected sea dog won't stop charging at me. He's really after my ass. Luckily, Leviathan hitbox is big, so aiming him using our gun is child's play. Our Pearl God gun is a savior in this fight, as it is able to dish out solid DPS and gives us some much needed lifesteal from time to time. While the lifesteal is little, it is consistent and probably saved my ass more than I'm aware of. Leviathan might be able to shoot big balls, but one thing for certain, my balls are bigger. Without even realizing, the sheer force of my massive balls took down Leviathan. By defeating Leviathan, we triggered Anahita's final phase. Because we basically killed her husband. How is she gonna be able to pay her child support now? I was too overconfident, which led to my demise. As Anahita's final phase might be a bit more troublesome than I anticipated. I had to refight them a few times, as I kept being reckless at dodging Leviathan balls before Anahita's final phase. But at last, I reserved my health before their final phase, which led me to grasp a better understanding on how to dodge their bullet hell. While I still did get hit a few times, just being a bit more careful, this fight became significantly easier, as our mobility gears are more than capable of giving us the edge in this battle. I smoothly dodged Anahita's shenanigans and smothered my bullets all over her. And now we've successfully defeated Anahita and Leviathan. I somehow got the community in my first try. I thought I was lucky, because back then this was a 1% drop chance item. Well, it turns out they recently buffed the drop rate. But hey, 10% is still lucky, right? Then I went to the Astral Infection biome and farmed down the enemies there, as I need a few stardust to craft an Astral Chunk, which is a summoning item for our next boss, Astrum Aureus. Not gonna lie, Astrum Aureus offers a terrible boss fight experience. Don't get me wrong, he does look cool. I absolutely love the Cosmic Spider sprite work. But damn, what the hell are these bullet hell kamikazes? It genuinely feels borderline impossible to dodge any of these boss attacks without an extremely large arena. It may be my fault for not making my arena size larger, but hey, I've always been an avid hater of Astrum Aureus since day one. I woke up and chose to hate specific calamity bosses as my new personality. And like I said before, the bullet hell in this boss fight is able to drive people insane. Now, I expect 20 different hate comments stating on why my personal Atmos opinion is wrong. I got to give credit to my powerful armor set and gun. If not for them and this fight stretch any longer, I would have lost my mind. But yeah, we successfully defeated Astrum Aureus. The loot from the back are not too useful. Aside from this Pyukumuku mount, it is very cute. Alright, our next objective is to enter the mysterious temple in the jungle. I traverse through the harsh landscape of the temple to reach the golem's arena, in which I clean up first using boom shurikens. I then summon the golem itself, and by doing so, it apparently destroys the platforms I made earlier. The arena-less concept of this fight is unique to say the least. It also serves as a foreshadowing of what will happen in the endgame fight later. And as you can see, Inferno made golem into an actual challenge, with brand new attacks that reminds me a lot of Sun's Undertale. The 
hardest part of this fight is definitely the close claustrophobic arena. Without the cramp arena, this fight would have been much easier. While Golem's attacks do look flashy and interesting now, I quickly notice a slight issue in this boss fight. I feel like Golem is a bit more tanky than the average boss in this stage. I don't know if it's just me or if Pearl God isn't a good weapon to use against Golem, but the tankiness of Golem quickly turned the fight to feel repetitive, as it keeps repeating the same attack patterns. Golem's second phase implements spikes on the ground, forcing us to use the moving platforms he summons as our footing. These spikes alone made the fight harder than I anticipated, as I need to strategize my flight timer, so my wing flight time doesn't run out amidst dodging his attacks. I genuinely do not understand how to be able to dodge this. Because of this, on few instances, Golem was able to outsustain me. One benefit of being a ranger against Golem is while the fight is stretched into a long one, the amount of range we get is enough to give us comfortable spacing against Golem's attacks. Well, on most of them. While that might be a common thing on most vanilla bosses for ranger class, Infernum actually encourages the player to be close to enemies as ranger, as you deal higher damage to enemies if you're close to them, which in my opinion is stupid. But yeah, Golem is a special case because of the cram close arena, so you're pretty much close to Golem all the time. Golem's final phase basically puts him into steroid induced mode. His attacks become much more aggressive and hunts and dangerous. But because of the stretch duration of the fight, I was able to memorize his attack patterns along the way, which made me able to fight through his final phase with little to no problems. One thing's for sure, while Golem fight isn't by any means hard, I dislike how tanky he is. But with enough persistence and willpower, we were able to successfully defeat Golem. Another major boss down. As we have defeated Golem, we must now face against even deadlier threats. From the wrath of the forgotten Asragal Don Slime, now being a super boss and having the power level equivalent of a post providence boss. To the madness of the Moon Lord himself, will I be able to survive and win the battle against these otherworldly creatures, or will I fall in the process? Help me get this video to 3000 likes and I'll continue this ranger journey. But until then, thank you and see you in the next video.